Chapter 396 The Worry in Her Heart More than a hundred villagers of Dongshan village followed behind a grey wolf and quietly entered a cave. If someone made any noise, the big grey wolf that was about the height of a person would stare fixedly at that person with his emerald green eyes until that person quieted down. As a result, the more than 100 people, including the children in their arms, all silently moved forward in the quiet, dark cave. Soon, a ray of light came from the top of the cave and a large cave appeared in front of everyone. The cave was very big and should be able to accommodate more than 300 people like Siakau said. The best thing was that it wasn't dark in the cave thanks to the glow from the top of the cave, which was like a bright lamp. It was very dry inside the cave, and there were a lot of dry branches and stones. Siakau stopped and announced that they would settle down here. Each family could select a place to settle down put down their luggage, and do some simple cleaning. They were safe for now, so the children, who were carried by the adults, were full of curiosity regarding the cave. After knowing that there was no danger in the cave, several of the older children began to explore the cave. The younger children frolicked around their families. Since there was a lot of echo in the cave, the children's laughter rippling through the cave made it oddly noisy. Princess Consort Jing furrowed her brows slightly and felt a slight headache. She preferred a quiet environment, so it was too noisy for her to stay in a cave with more than a hundred people of varying ages. However, she knew that it was a peculiar period and she shouldn't be too picky. Thus, she just signed and endured it. Yuxiakao dodged an infant who had just learned to walk and came up to Princess Consort Jing's side. She said, Your Highness. There's a lot of connected caves here. I'll go with older sister Make Siang to select one that's suitable for you to stay in. Later, you can move over. When Princess Consort Jing heard this, she revealed a smile and nodded, All right, you and Make Siang should be careful. Bring little white and big grey along with you. Come back earlier. Yu Xiaokao glanced at big grey, who was drinking water with his head lowered and gently touched his butt with her feet. Big Grey moved his bottom slightly to the side and looked up at her with a somewhat impatient expression as if she had interrupted him from enjoying the mystic stone water. Big Grey, are you full? If you are, then take us to find a cave where we can live. It's best to have around four or five caves that we can live in. It doesn't need to be too big. It's big enough if it can accommodate ten or so people. Yuxia Cow didn't care whether Big Grey could understand her. The cave was very big with a lot of connecting caves, like a maze. How was she supposed to find habitable areas by herself? Make Siang chuckled and said, Miss Yu, can he really understand you? You mustn't underestimate an animal's ability, especially one with intelligence. Big Grey isn't a normal wolf, so he should be able to understand me, right? Yuxia Cow also felt somewhat uncertain as she spoke. Big Grey pushed away Little Black who was trying to take his Mystic Stone water and swiftly finished licking the bowl of Mystic Stone water. He licked his mouth and walked towards a small opening in the cave. Seeing that Xia Cow and Meik Xiang didn't follow him, he turned his head to look at them, as if he was rushing them. Xia Cow understood and pulled Meik Xiang to follow along. The opening was as tall as a person's height and two people were able to walk side by side. After walking about 50 meters, it suddenly brightened up. This part of the cave was semi-closed, and the top of the cave was semi-circular, like it was covered by a lid. One side of the lid was opened, and several slightly slanted trees covered the gap. Among them, there was a wild peach tree with many fruits hanging on it. Many of them were ripe for picking. From the opening, she could see the view of the valley. At this time, it was already dusk. The orange sunlight shot into the cave, and made it appear warm and bright. On the walls of the cave, there were a row of openings like doors. Xiaokao looked inside and saw that there were small caves that were probably dug by humans. The walls were all neat and tidy, and there were also some stone beds and stone chairs left behind. Each of the small caves looked like a room that was around 70 to 80 square meters. It was dry and refreshing inside, and people could move in after doing some simple cleaning. Meik Xiang was very surprised as she looked at each room and asked, people must have lived here before. I wonder who dug these caves. We wouldn't have taken over some hermits' homes. Right? Yuxia Cow looked at the thick dusk on the ground, and then shook her head, saying, even if someone had lived here, 
it must have been a long time ago, ancestors plant the tree and the descendants enjoyed the cool under the tree. Well, it's to our benefit. There are eight rooms here, which should be enough for us to live in. Older Maxiang, please tidy up here while I go get the princess consort. When Yuxiakao came back with the princess consort and her family, Maxiang had already cleaned up one of the bigger caves. At this time, she was wiping the stone bed in the cave with a wet handkerchief. A hey, older sister Maxiang, where did you get the water? Yuxiakao asked in slight surprise. With a smile on her face, Maxiang pointed at a stone trough near the gap. The spring water flowed out of the mountain wall and gathered in the stone trough. The excessive water flowed out to the outside of the wall. This is really such a good location. With this stone trough, it will be so much easier for us to get water. As mentioned, if there wasn't a source of water here, they would have to fetch water from the valley under the tall cliff or walk back to the other cave and go out to find a water source. It would be very inconvenient. Langxian quickly got a basin from another servant and started cleaning the cave with Maxiang. They covered the stone bed with a brocade quilt, and used the stone tables, which were carved out of the walls as storage space. Princess Consort Jing's belongings were neatly placed on the tables. Xia Kao placed the luminous pearl in the highest part of the cave. The entire room lit up as if they had just installed a light bulb in the room. As for the remaining caves, the Yu family, Xia Kao's oldest aunt's family, and eldest granduncle's family each lived in one cave. The maid servants and senior servants divided the rest of the four caves. The manservants and imperial bodyguards could only sleep in a corner of the living room. It was getting late, and in order to escape, no one had time to eat lunch. Everyone was so hungry that their chests were sticking to their backs. There was quite a lot of food brought over from Prince Jing's Mountain Manor, and there was a complete set of condiments such as oil, salt, and soy sauce. Xia Kao's family and her relatives had brought enough food to last them for three to five days, moreover, they also had little black and little white catching pheasants and wild hares back. They simply cleaned up their own cave. The stone bed inside was very big like a large kang bed, and it was big enough for ten or so people to sleep on. Old Yu slept in the innermost spot, and next to him were Yu Hai and Madame Liu. Xia Kao and Xiolian slept at the outermost part of the bed. For families with poor living conditions, it was common for the entire family to crowd together on one big kang bed during the winter in order to save firewood. After putting their things down on the stone bed, Xia Kao took Xiolian out to the gap outside of the cave. They set up a simple stove with stones, washed the rice, and started cooking. She looked to the side and saw the servants of the Prince Jing's household busily working. They had three stoves on which they cooked three pots of rice. There were thirty to forty people from the Prince Jing's household, including the servants and imperial bodyguards. They ate a lot of food and everyone was hungry now, so it wouldn't be enough if they cooked too little. Yu Feng came over with a bag of rice. She squatted down beside Xia Kao and helped her light a fire. She thought for a moment and said, Why don't our families cook together? That way. We can save up on some firewood. Yuxia Kao nodded. She thought about it and said, Oldest paternal aunt, can you go over to eldest granduncle's place and ask if they want to eat together? Our families are eating together, so if we don't ask them, I'm afraid that eldest granduncle's family might think that we're not treating them as relatives. Yuxia Feng smiled and said, Xia Kao is still the most thoughtful one. Okay, I'll go ask eldest aunt to see what they plan on doing. A moment later, she came back and shook her head with a smile. She said to Xia Kao, eldest uncle said that they brought dried rations, so they're not cooking tonight. They also said that they will eat separately since they have a lot of people in the family. In the middle of their conversation, a figure passed through the opening of the cave. Xia Kao looked carefully and saw that it was Commander Zheng and his subordinates. Each person carried a bundle of firewood on their backs. It turned out that the bodyguards of the Prince Jing's household thought that it was too troublesome to walk around the cave, so they tied a rope on the stone and tree sticking out of the gap. It was only ten or so meters tall which wasn't too difficult to climb for people who practiced martial arts like them. Commander Zheng left three big bundles of firewood for Xiaokao, 
which was enough for them to cook three or four meals. Yuxiakao returned the favor by giving them a pheasant that little black caught. It wasn't enough for all of them to eat, but at least they had some meat among all the vegetable dishes, right? Xiako outskinned the wild hair that she kept, and then stewed it together with potatoes. She gave both Princess Consort Jing and eldest Grand Uncle a bowl each. While the rice was cooking, she added the sausages and smoked meat that they didn't finish in the winter, which was delicious even without vegetables. In addition, Xiaokao also cooked a pot of lava soup. The members of the Yu family and the Liu family all held a big bowl of cured meat rice with potatoes stewed hair. It might be due to hunger, but everyone ate with great relish. Even the youngest little Fangping finished more than half a bowl of rice and a spoonful of hair meat. Seeing the little guy eat with relish, Madame Liu suddenly put down her chopsticks and heavily sighed. Yu Kaifeng saw this and asked, What's wrong? When I see little Fangping, I will think about our little Shitu. I don't know if he's safe in town, and there's also our Yu Hang. Xia Kao said that the Woka pirates have also reached the docks. Xia sure wouldn't have encountered them. Right the more she thought about this, the more Madame Liu felt as if there was a large rock pressing on her heart. Yu Kaifeng comforted her. Don't worry too much. Little Shitu is in town, which is quite a distance from the sea. Even if the pirates went there, aren't the local authorities there? They will definitely ensure their safety. As for Xiaoshaw, there is even less for you to worry about. Xiaokao's godfather is a great general who has experienced numerous battles. His subordinates are also very skilled. There's no way that they can't protect him. Hearing her words. Madame Liu felt that she was right and her heart slightly relaxed. But she couldn't continue eating after eating half a bowl of rice. To raise a child until they were a hundred years old and be worried about them until they were ninety-nine. Parents would always be worried about their children. Chapter 397 Urgent Message Unbeknownst to Madame Liu, her two sons, who she was worried about, had daringly sneaked out of town and were rushing to Dongshan village. Eldest brother, if those Woku pirates didn't find anyone in the village, would they go directly to town on the official road? Perhaps this path isn't safe anymore. Little Shitu's face was full of worries for his family. It was safer to stay in town, but their family had all gone into the West Mountains and their safety was uncertain. So how could he be at ease? Yu Hang patted his younger brother, who was sitting in front of him, pacifyingly and speculated, killing isn't the ultimate goal of those Woku pirates. Plundering goods is their most important mission. The villagers left in a hurry, so they could only take a few things. There are enough food and goods left behind for them to search through for a while. At this time, they should have settled down in Dongshan village, so it's the safest to stay in town. Shitu, in fact, I can come back by myself. You're young and have a short stature, so you wouldn't be able to help much even if you return. Little Shitu shook his head and disagreed, although there's not much I can help with, my heart is with everyone. It's really painful for the family to be separated in different places and be worried about each other's safety. Yu Hang remained silent for a moment. His younger brother was only nine and he was a young county level official. His teachers praised him a lot and the family were full of expectations for him. Yu Hang didn't know if bringing his younger brother back was the right decision. If something happened to his younger brother, how was he supposed to face his parents and younger sisters? But, in order to get to the West Mountain, we must pass by our house in the village. Besides the village head's house, our house is the biggest. So, we don't know if there will be any Woku at our house. Yu Hang's concern wasn't without reason. Little Shita thought about it and said, I know a path that can bypass our house, but it's somewhat difficult to walk. At that time, I'm not sure if we can bring Little Grey along but Little Grey is very smart. If it hides in the forest, it probably won't get caught by those wicked pirates, right? Little Grey was a very intelligent little donkey. It had been with the Yu family for nearly three years and had done a lot of work for the Yu family. It had a special place in the hearts of every member of the Yu family. Would it be dangerous for it if they left it in the forest at night? Would it get eaten by those woke pirates? However, there was no use in worrying about this right now. During such a crucial time, they didn't even know if humans would be safe let alone a domesticated donkey. They soon reached the small path that little Shitu mentioned. In order to enter the mountain, 
they needed to climb over a mountain peak. Although it wasn't very high, it was somewhat steep. Humans could manage to climb up, but it was impossible for Little Grey. Disregarding whether Little Grey could actually understand him, Little Shitter thoroughly cautioned the little donkey. After that, he patted its bottom and told it to quickly find a place to hide. Little Grey appeared somewhat reluctant as it looked at Little Shitter with its big dewy eyes. It licked his hand and walked into the nearby forest while turning back at every step. Under the dim moonlight, the brothers climbed up the mountain. Fortunately, the brothers were used to climbing up mountains since childhood. This slight slope wasn't too much of a problem for them. Four hours later, the two brothers had arrived at the foggy forest. A woo, a woo, a woo. A series of familiar wolf howling turned little Shitu's stern expression into a smile. Eldest brother, Big Grey and the others came to welcome us. As soon as he finished speaking, a black figure dashed out from the white fog and excitedly jumped towards Little Shitu. Little Black, slow down. I can't carry you now. When Little Shitu saw the black figure running towards himself at full speed, he feared that it would unwittingly jump onto himself. With his small body, would it even be possible for him to bear the weight of Little Black, who weighed over 100 catties? Even without his reminder, Little Black had a sense of propriety. His lightning-like figure abruptly came to a stop three meters away from Little Shitu. The force of inertia caused his forelegs to slide two meters forward. When he finally stopped, his head just happened to touch Little Shitu's shoulder. Little Black hadn't seen Little Shitu for nearly half a month and was particularly excited to see him. He rubbed his head on Little Shitu's body and used his rough tongue to lick Little Shitu's hands and face. Big Grey and Little White, who were behind him, strode forward in the same solemn manner and came to their side. Little Shitter rubbed Little Black's neck, patted Little White's head, and then climbed onto Big Grey's back. Big Grey shook his body in annoyance, but Little Shitter held on tightly and didn't fall down. Big Grey, you can't always act so differently in front of different people. No matter what my second sister does to you, you're as obedient as a cat. However, you won't allow me to do anything. I haven't seen you for three months. So just let me ride on you with a rascally expression, little shitter clung onto Big Grey's body with both his legs and arms. You hang, on the other hand, went up to Little White and asked with a slightly uneasy voice, Little White, have my parents and sisters arrived? Are they safe? As little shitter struggled to avoid being thrown off by Big Grey, he giggled and said, since Little Black and Little White are here. Our family is definitely also here. Second sister and I are the only ones who are familiar with this part of the forest, so there won't be any problems at all with second sister leading the way. Little White looked at little shit too, and then nodded his head at Yu Hang. He turned his body and looked back at Yu Hang, motioning him to follow him. As for little shit too, he was finally thrown off by Big Grey. He patted the dust on his long gown, made a funny face at Big Grey, and also followed his older brother into the forest. Little White guided the brothers through the maze-like cave and avoided the big cave that the villagers were staying in. They soon reached the entrance of the cave that the Yu family stayed in. There were two imperial bodyguards guarding the entrance to prevent the villagers from disturbing them again. It turned out that in the evening, Madame Zhang had come to cause trouble with Yu Das Han. They had thrown away the food that they brought along when they were being chased by the Woku pirates. Seeing that the two little wolves had caught game, the mother and son wanted to pretend to be pitiful and get some food. Madame Zhang thought that since she had once been married to old Yu, the old man wouldn't just watch as they starved to death. This extraordinary person finally remembered that she and old Yu were married. When old Yu was seriously ill and on the verge of death, she didn't even think about their familial affections at all. The Yu family also didn't bring a lot of food. No one knew when those pirates were going to leave, so it was impossible for them to share their food with the pair of ungrateful mother and son. When Madame Lee fled in the forest, she got separated from the group and her safety was still uncertain. However, Yu Das Han didn't seem very sad about it. As expected, it was true that a married couple were birds in the same forest who would fly separately in the face of danger. Madame Zhang and her son were thick-skinned and wanted to continue to cause trouble. Princess Consort Jing's head started to hurt due to the ruckus they were causing, 
So she just gave them two pancakes and had the bodyguards throw them out. She also sent two imperial bodyguards to guard the entrance. Except for the members of the Yu family and Liu family, no one was allowed to casually enter. With Princess Consort Jing here, the pair of extraordinary mother and son didn't dare to continue to cause trouble and timidly went back to the bigger cave. The two imperial bodyguards recognized the Yu brothers. Although they thought it was strange for the brothers to come back at this time, they just let them go in. It was already late at night, so everyone was already in deep slumber. As soon as the brothers entered the cave, Commander Zheng, who slept on the floor outside, opened his eyes vigilantly. With the dim light of the torch, he took a clearer look at their faces. Then he pointed to the small cave where the family stayed to the brothers and made a gesture, telling them to be quiet. When the brothers saw that the bodyguards and servants lying on the ground, they carefully walked around them and arrived at the small cave that their family lived in. Under the dim light of the torch, the brothers saw their sleeping family. With tears brimming in their eyes, their anxious hearts finally relaxed. After a day of thrilling escape, the Yu family members didn't sleep very well. Yu Hai had opened his eyes when the Yu brothers entered the cave. Seeing the tired and untidy appearance of the brothers, he immediately sat up. He didn't speak for a long time, thinking that he was dreaming. Father, don't worry, we're fine with tears brimming in his eyes. Little Shita walked to the stone bed and pulled on his father's hands. Yu Hai finally believed that this wasn't a dream. He examined both children and asked in a slightly angry tone, You kids, why aren't you obediently staying in town and coming here at this time? If you guys encounter a wild beast in the middle of the night, what will you do ah? Yu Hai's voice woke everyone up. When they saw Yu Hang and little Shi too, they were both surprised and happy. Madame Liu hugged the brothers tightly, and then scolded them, feeling fearful. Yu Xiaokao silently watched the scene and felt that they could overcome anything with the whole family together. Eldest brother, Shi Tu, have you guys eaten dinner yet? There's still some cured meat rice, but it's a little cold. Yu Xiaokao saw that their lips were peeling from dryness and guessed that they hadn't eaten and drank anything since the afternoon. Little Shi was slightly embarrassed as he struggled out of his mother's embrace. He smiled at Xiaokao and said, it's still second sister who dotes on me the most. Eldest brother and I were worried about you guys, so we left in a hurry. We didn't even drink a sip of water the whole way. I'm dying of hunger. Ah. Before he had finished speaking, his little tummy growled several times, amusing everyone. While the Yu brothers wolfed down the cold rice, the capital had already received the urgent message sent from Tangatown. Could the emperor just sit back when he saw that the Woku pirates had invaded? That night, he immediately summoned the ministers to his imperial study to discuss the situation. The Tangu area was under the ruling of royal prince Yang, so he naturally wasn't left out. Zhejun Yang immediately became anxious when he heard that a lot of Woku pirates had gone to Tangatown. They also appeared to be well trained and very fierce and didn't seem like ordinary pirates. His lady mother and future wife were both in Dongshan village are. Ah, your imperial majesty, are the Woku pirates at Dongshan village? Zhejun Yang interrupted the official's discussion and anxiously asked. When the emperor nodded solemnly, Zhejun Yang immediately turned around and left the imperial study. The message was sent from Tangutown and reported to the emperor. Then the emperor summoned them over. Didn't they waste a lot of time already? He didn't know how his lady mother and Xiaokao were doing. Could those imperial bodyguards protect them? Zhejun Yang could only blame himself for not leaving more bodyguards at the mountain manor. How long could those twenty or so imperial bodyguards hold up? Chapter 398 The People He Worries About Emperor, look at Royal Prince Yang, he the Minister of War had long disliked the fact that the Emperor favored Royal Prince Yang. Thus. When he had a chance to badmouth the other person, he took it. As soon as he opened his mouth, Zhejun Fan knew what the minister wanted to say. He waved a hand to interrupt the official and said, Beloved official Zen, Princess Consort Jing is still residing in the mountain villa at Tanga Town ah? The mountain villa is close to the sea and Jun Yang definitely is worried about his lady mother. We can understand his filial heart and concerns. The Minister of War had a tactful personality. When he saw that the Emperor wanted to protect the Royal Prince, 
he resentfully closed his eyes for a second. Why was the emperor always so lenient to that good-for-nothing and cruelly violent fellow? Was it because he was the son of the emperor's imperial uncle? The emperor didn't only have imperial prince Jing as his only imperial uncle. Furthermore, weren't any one of his own sons more talented and outstanding than royal prince Yang? Despite all that, the emperor only seemed to regard royal prince Yang with importance. He really couldn't understand why. While the rest of the court officials were currently discussing the matter at Tanga Town, Zijun Yang was currently dashing back to Imperial Prince Jing's estate. An Imperial Prince was allowed to have his own private army. He knew that his Lord Father was in the outer study and rushed over there to inform his father about what he just learned from the Emperor. Once Imperial Prince Jing found out that Woka pirates were attacking Tanga Town and that his beloved wife was still in the mountain villa there, he almost lost his reason. If he hadn't been able to restrain himself, he would have been just like his son and ran to Tanga Town despite his other responsibilities. However, since he had been an Imperial Prince for over twenty years, he was able to squelch the worry towards his beloved wife. He took out the token to the prince's estate, gave it to his son and solemnly said, Your lady mother's safety is in your hands now, son. Lord father, ease your worries. I, your son, will definitely not disappoint you. Zijun Yang gripped the token tightly within his hands and didn't say another word as he turned around to bring head steward Liu and a few bodyguards along. They spurred their horses the entire way to the lands on the outskirts of the capital that housed the estate's private soldiers. After checking over the 800 soldiers and giving orders to Commander Liu, they all started to head towards Tanga Town at top speed. However, Zijun Yang thought that the soldiers' horses were too slow so he left a personal bodyguard to give them directions and sped off on his own. He took with him two bodyguards and head steward Liu. The four of them raced to Dongshan village on horseback the whole way there. Because the situation was urgent, all of the relay stations had their horses ready to ride. Thus, Zijun Yang switched horses at every station and didn't rest at all throughout the whole journey. A route that normally took two to three days was compressed by him and the three other people into one day and one night. Like that, the small group arrived at the heavily guarded Tanga Town. Master, you've already been on horseback for a whole day and night. You haven't eaten or drunk anything. Even a person made of steel wouldn't be to handle this R. Ah. How about we first go into town and find a place to eat and drink head steward Liu had noticed that his master's lips were dry and cracked, and his eyes were completely bloodshot. The prince was covered entirely in dust and there was no color on his face, so the steward couldn't help but beg him to rest. Even he, as a servant who was used to doing all sorts of tasks every day, was having trouble handling such a gruesome schedule. His master usually lived a luxurious life full of comforts. In fact, when they were out at sea and encountered storms and other hardships, it was not as difficult as today. However, Zijun Yang sped past Tanga Town's gates and directly galloped his horse down the official road towards Dongshan village. It was as if head steward Liu's entreaties hadn't even entered his ears so he naturally couldn't respond. Stop to get a drink and eat food? What a joke. What sort of situation was it now? The two most important women in his life, all right, one of them could only be considered a young maiden, were currently being trapped at Dongshan village by the Woka pirates and it wasn't certain if they were still alive. How could he rest at this time? Right now, it was as if a blistering fire was in his heart. His mind was only filled with the thoughts of his lady mother and Xiaokao and their safety. He could care less about his own physical discomforts at this time. The sooner he got to Dongshan village, the sooner the danger would lessen a bit for his lady mother and Xiaokao. He absolutely could not stop now nor rest at this time. For the sake of his loved ones, time was of the essence right now. If the two women who had treated him the best in his life were gone, what was the point in him living anymore? The horse crop in his hands came down heavily on the horse's rump again. His beloved horse had already been exhausted on the way to Tanga Town, so he was currently riding a horse he had switched into when he was at Jinwai Prefectural City. The horse had been spurred on at full speed this whole time, 
so it already had streaks of sweat and foam at its mouth, it was likely it wouldn't be able to endure such a punishing speed for much longer. Suddenly, the sound of a horse whinnying in distress could be heard followed by a loud thump. Head steward Liu turned back to look and saw that one of the horses that a bodyguard was riding had collapsed from exhaustion. It lay there, trembling weakly. All of them knew that once a horse fell from exhaustion, there was nothing left for it. How many horses had fallen already? Not even the best horse in the world could endure galloping at top speed all day and night without rest. Huh? When head steward Liu turned back to the front, he found out that his master had already traveled a great distance and left the three of them behind. Zijun Yang only had one thought in his mind right now, faster, faster faster. Everything else could not even enter his scope of attention now. Nothing was more important to him than getting to Dongshan village as fast as possible. Fortunately, the horse that Zijun Yang was riding still had some energy left. Only when he reached the entrance of Dongshan village did the hapless animal finally collapse from exhaustion. At the moment the animal stumbled down, Zijun Yang leapt out of the saddle and landed not far in front of the horse. He didn't stop moving for a single second and continued to run forward with his two legs towards the direction of Dongshan village. Head steward Liu had a face full of worry as he mustered his energy and jumped off his horse to reach a further distance to chase after his master. His horse also collapsed not long after. Despite his advanced age, he had to move his old body and run after the prince. Master. The village has Woku pirates there. You should observe it first and then come up with a strategy before head steward Liu had finished talking, Zijun Yang had already gotten to the village gates and was in the midst of fighting against the pirates standing guard there. Zijun Yang looked like a crane in a flock of chickens as the pirates were all shorter than him. He didn't say a word as the pirates surrounded him with their knives on hand. It was better to act first and talk later. He unsheathed his double-edged sword in one swift movement and took care of these pirates in a few moves. Perhaps he had finally heard head steward Liu's words but he no longer charged forward into the village in a conspicuous manner. Instead, he slunk forward and made sure to stay hidden. When a patrolling group of pirates came by, he avoided them and then headed towards the direction of the Yu family's residence, which was at the foot of the West Mountain. This was already the second night that the Woku pirates had been lodging in Dongshan village. Watanabe Hiroshi was currently in the middle of the Yu family's courtyard. Every day, he ate chicken meat, pork meat white rice and food made from white flour. It was quite a luxurious situation for him. However, he was very much aware that he couldn't spend too much time here. They needed to leave on either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow at the latest. The Great Ming's army was not to be trifled with. Watanabe Hiroshi ganned on a chicken leg as he frowned in thought. It had already been a day since he sent some men to the docks. Why hadn't they come back yet? Did General Yamaguchi encounter some difficulties over there? When Zijun Yang came over the wall and looked into the Yu family's courtyard, he saw that all of the vegetable fields had been stomped over and defiled. He remembered that these fields were all lovingly taken care of by Xiaokao and her family. He was so incensed by the destruction that he barely managed to restrain his urge to jump in and slaughter all of the pirates in there. Head steward Liu noticed that his master's restrained urges and quickly stated, Master, we haven't seen a single villager in Dongshan village and we also didn't find any places where they were holding prisoners. They must have been able to flee in time. Master, let's not do anything here and find the people first. Did you already go and look at the mountain villain up the mountain? How's the situation there? Zijun Yang took a deep breath. The fury within his phoenix eyes was enough to burn a man to ashes. He glared fiercely at Lord Watanabe who was currently sitting in Xiaokao's personal rocking chair and leisurely gnawing on a chicken leg. He snarled inside, that miserly little lass never let me sit in her rocking chair in the past. You, you stinking dwarf, actually dare to sit in Xiaokao's chair. Once I guarantee my lady mother's and Xiaokao's safety, I'm going to rip you into pieces. Master, the mountain villa has been locked up securely and the people inside must have retreated to safer grounds. Perhaps the Woku pirates weren't able to find the villa because it's halfway up the mountain and hidden among the trees. When head steward Liu saw the condition of the mountain residence, 
he had let out a sigh of relief. The princess consort must be safe somewhere. Zijun Yang nodded in reply and then lowered his head to think for a bit. He mumbled to himself, looks like my lady mother must have fled along with Xiaokao and the others to a safe refuge. But where would a hundred or so people from Dongshan village go? As he spoke, he looked towards the lofty and grandiose west mountain in the distance. He scowled slightly. Head steward Liu, wait at the mouth of the village for Xiao and Chunzi, tell them to guard the mountain villa. If any little nasty pirates come around, kill them instantly. Zijun Yang jumped down from the tall walls of the Yu family's residence and dashed towards the direction of the west mountain. Head steward Liu hurried after him and lowered his voice as he projected, Master. Where are you going? Ah, I'm going to the West Mountain. Xiaokao is a sneaky little lass and must have brought my lady mother and the villagers to hide in the mountain range. I'm going to go find them. Zijun Yang felt even more desire to seek Xiaokao. He knew, with that weird and clever little lass around, his lady mother would be perfectly safe. Head steward Liu stated somewhat dispiritedly, Master, the mountain range is vast. Do you know where Miss Yu took everyone? You're not very familiar with the terrain there. What if you encounter some vicious beasts? He didn't say anything else because his master had already ran into the mountain forest and had already disappeared into the thick vegetation. Head steward Liu thought of the task that his master had given him and angrily went back to the entrance of the village. He leapt onto the old elm tree that was there, which must have been at least a few hundred years old to wait for the two imperial bodyguards to arrive. With what he knew about Xiaokao, Zijun Yang could already guess where the little lass had most likely taken all of the people. Zijun Yang had gone a few times to Xiaokao's secret valley. The ravine not only had a bunch of beautiful and rare flora, but it also had a lot of wild herbs and fruit trees. The creek there also had lots of fish swimming in the waters. The most important part was that the secret valley was hard to find yet had no savage beasts. There were also enough caves in that area that could hold at least a few hundred people. This was naturally the best place for the people to hide in. Zijun Yang hurried in the direction that he remembered. He rejoiced inwardly that, in the past, he had used the excuse of guarding Xiaokao against any beasts and tagged along a few times. Thus, he had a decent idea of where to go. At this time, he felt tired, thirsty and hungry, but he could only continue to worry about his lady mother and Xiaokao. With those thoughts on the forefront of his mind, he leapt through the thick vegetation that was about as tall as a man. In that short half an hour, he felt like time was creeping by slowly, as if it was slower than two days or even two years. Who's there? Not far from the inner forest shrouded by mist. A familiar figure jumped down from a tree. If he hadn't already recognized the person's voice, Zijun Liang already would have attacked Commander Zheng and killed the other man, leaving a corpse on the forest ground. Chapter 399, Drawn into an Embrace Third young master, how are you here? Commander Zheng almost didn't recognize the one and sallow figure in front of him and exclaimed in surprise. After Zijun Yang identified the person in front of him, he grabbed onto the commander's shoulder and hurriedly said, Zheng Yun, my lady mother and Zhu Xiaokao, are they okay? Have they been injured? Commander Zheng grimaced from the tight grip of the prince and stated, They're all okay, all okay. This subordinate will take you to see the princess consort now. Zijun Liang loosened his hold on the other man's shoulder and the tight feeling in his heart finally relaxed. Commander Zheng led the way in front. After receiving Xiaokao's instructions, the mountain villa's guards were all patrolling within the misty and foggy forest. Commander Zheng took a brief glance at the royal prince and calculated the time. Yesterday, at around noon, the Woka pirates had arrived. The capital was around 400 kilometers away, and, at top speed, it must have been late at night when the news finally arrived. Third young master must have ran straight to Dongshan village as soon as he got the news Ah, It only took him slightly more than a day of travel to get to Dongshan village. The prince absolutely must have ridden his horses at top speed in order to finish the 400 kilometer journey so quickly. Just how many horses were dead of exhaustion from his trip? What about third young master's black cloud? It couldn't have been left on the side of the road right? Although third young master usually looked very cold and reserved, 
he had always been very filial to his lady mother, no wonder the princess consort treated him more lovingly than the heir to the estate and second young master, her efforts had not been wasted on him. However, how could the commander of the bodyguards know that the royal prince, who had been praised to be very extremely filial, was more worried about Yuxiakao at this moment, although Zijun Yang was also concerned about his lady mother, there were still over twenty or so skilled bodyguards to protect her. In addition, the mountain residents also had a dozen or so servants to take care of her. It was likely that she was perfectly safe through all of this. As for the light of his heart, Yuxiakao, other than her parents, the rest of her family was either the elderly or the young. If they encountered the Woku pirates, they had no way to resist R. Throughout his whole breakneck journey, images of a tiny scared face and bloody dress kept flashing through his mind the demon that had been hibernating for a long time in his heart finally started stirring up again. He did his best to squish down the violent tendencies inside him as he was afraid that if he lost control of himself, then he would lose precious time to get to the village and Xiaokao would. Perhaps he didn't even notice it himself but that clever and adorable little lass now had a firm foothold in his heart. Her importance had even eclipsed the mother whom he respected and adored. They circled around the Dongshan villages. Before long, Commander Zheng very quickly brought Royal Prince Yang to the cave that had been designated to them alone. As soon as he stepped into the cave, Zhejun Yang immediately spotted a slight figure in front of a simple stove in the corner. The person's back was turned towards him. In that second, all of the irritability had left his body. Seeing that familiar figure reassured his heart and it was as if some hole inside him had been crammed full. Third young master? Commander Zheng turned his head and saw that the prince had stopped moving forward. The youth was staring fixedly at a corner, so the bodyguard couldn't help but call at him. It was as if he had just woken up from a dream. Zijun Yang went forward with large steps towards the figure that had been the object of his worries for so long. When the people outside the cave, who were all busy doing their tasks, saw Zijun Yang, they all cried out in delighted surprise, Third young master! And your royal highness! The young royal prince, wasn't he in the capital? A few days ago, she had gotten a letter from him that said that he probably still had half a month more before he finally finished his tasks. How could he suddenly appear at these caves? Yuxiaka was very confused as she turned around. Before she could clearly see what was going on, she had been pulled into a warm and gentle embrace. Yuxiaka stiffened for a moment. In both of her lives, she had never been this intimately held by a man before. The amount of heat on her face was almost enough to fry an egg. This hug was filled with the scent of a man, which had the slight aroma of sweat mixed in with the smell of ambergris. It didn't repel her at all. However her face seemed to be plastered against his rock-hard abdomen, if it went down a bit Yuxiakao felt horrified at the thought and forcefully pushed against the prince. Madame Liu, who had been helping on the side, dropped the iron pot in her hands with a loud clang. She pointed at Zijun Yang with a hand that shook with anger and worry. In front of all of these people, her youngest daughter had been embraced by Royal Prince Yang. Men and women needed to keep their distance from one another. What would happen to her youngest daughter's reputation now? If Royal Prince Yang was being sincere towards her Xiaokao, that was one thing. However, if the royal prince was only chasing after something novel what would her poor Ka do in the future? As long as you're okay, that's what matters. I've been so worried. Zijun Yang felt his face flush when he saw his future mother-in-law staring at him blatantly. It definitely wasn't proper of him to hug a girl in front of her mother. However, he had been unable to control himself when his feelings overwhelmed him. Yuxiakao noticed that her mother had acted as if Sun Wukong had paralyzed her with an art with her eyes bugged open. She glared fiercely at the troublemaker and then grumpily said, This older sister is doing just fine. Calling yourself older sister now eh? You're younger than me by seven to eight years. Instead, you really should be addressing me as older brother Jun Yang. Zijun Yang saw that her face had a healthy glow and her clothes were neat and tidy, so he was finally able to relax. He couldn't control his mouth and let out a sarcastic remark. In your dreams, addressing him as older brother Jun Yang would be too sickeningly corny. Yuxiakao roasted him in her mind, 
this older sister has lived two lives already and, with my combined age, I am old enough to be your aunt. You're out of luck if you want to take advantage of me. A hint of a smile curled onto the edge of Zijun Yang's lips. He was about to say something when he frowned and sniffed at the air. What's this smell? Smells like some type of meat is burning. My pheasant stewed with mushrooms. Mother, the food is burning. Quickly give the spatula to me. Yuxia Cow also smelled the scent of something burning and hurriedly took the spatula from Madame Liu's hands before sprinting towards the pot with the food cooking in it to flip the food. Luckily, only a few pieces of pheasant meat at the bottom of the pot had been burned. The rest of the food was still edible. Zijun Yang said a greeting as Xia Cow ran to rescue her pheasant stewed with mushrooms and was then brought to the inner cave that Princess Consort Jing resided in by Mexiang. When Princess Consort Jing saw her son, she had a smile on her face while she shook her head ruefully. She lightly sighed. No wonder all of the matrons in the village say that once a son is married he'll forget his mother. Xia Kao isn't even your wife yet but she's still more important to you than me, your mother. Lady mother, just what are you saying? I only greeted her first because I saw her first. It was only a few sentences Zijun Yang was obviously a bit embarrassed and had to say a few words to defend himself. Oh, are you sure it was only a few sentences in greeting? How come I heard from other people that as soon as you entered you went up to hug her? Ah? And you even did that in front of her mother. If I was Xia Kao's mother, I would have long thrown the spatula in my hands towards your head. Princess Consort Jing suppressed the smile on her lips as she made fun of her son. Zijun Yang replied somewhat sheepishly, Lady Mother, are you sure I'm your biological son ah? How could my own mother say such weird things to me ah? The mother and son were currently having their conversation in the inner cave. While that was happening, Madame Liu finally couldn't restrain herself from saying something in the outer cave. She softly said, Ka, in the future, with the royal prince try to keep some distance. You're still young right now but I need to tell you that when men and women interact together, the one that always loses out is the woman. Before marriage, you must not do any intimate actions. Yuxia Kao thought this was kind of funny. However, when she saw the worried look on her mother's face, she hurriedly nodded her head and said, Mother, don't worry so much. I know what's proper and what's not. The young royal prince isn't that sort of man. Earlier it was probably because he was too concerned about us, so he forgot his manners. You've always been dependable since you were young, so I was only giving you a reminder. Please don't believe the flowery speech and promises of a man. As a woman, only when you respect yourself and love yourself will a man treat you with respect. Madame Liu thought that her daughter was still too young for her to say things too explicitly. In the future, she would still have time to slowly teach her. She took out the pheasant stewed with mushrooms from the pot and divided the food into two plates. She gave the smaller plate to one of the maids from the mountain villa to have her serve it to the princess consort. The environment within the cave complex was on the cruder side, and Xia Kao had a good hand at cooking, so the princess consort's meals were all made by her. Zijun Yang smelled the delicious scent coming towards the cave and saw Lang Xian coming in with the plate of pheasant stewed with mushrooms. He grinned at Xia Kao and scampered over as he said, Oh, looks like the food here is quite good. Looks like you've all been living the good life here. I was all worried for nothing. Yu Xia Kao inspected him from head to toe and frowned at the sight of his sloppy attire. Did you come straight from a refugee camp? Ah? Look at yourself. Quickly go wash up in the small creek now. K how could you say such a thing to the royal prince? Quickly apologize to him now. Madame Liu noticed that her youngest daughter hadn't been the least bit polite when addressing the prince and was afraid the prince would get angry. Thus, she hurriedly scolded her daughter. Zijun Yang hastily pasted on a warm and gentle smile and spoke to his future mother-in-law. It's not a problem. Auntie, in the future, just consider me to be one of your family's nephews, no need to stand on such courtesy. Xia Kao speaking like this to me means she doesn't see me as an outsider. Makes me very happy ah. Do you see now ah? He's the one asking for this you Xia Kao revealed a satisfied expression as if she had done something great. Zijun Yang gave her a look that said just watch how I get back at you for this and then followed Commander Zheng outside. They exited from the side and jumped down a few meters from a cliff. The ravine experienced all four seasons and right now they were at the end of spring.
The water in the little creek wasn't considered too cold, so Zhejun Yang was able to wash off all of the dust and dirt from his body. After changing into a clean set of clothing, he felt as if all of the exhaustion had been washed away from him. When they were eating, Zhejun Yang actually wanted to sit at the same table as Yu Xiaokao. However, he decided to sit with his mother to take care of her and ended up reluctantly going into the inner cave. Princess Consort Jing quipped, Your eyes are almost glued onto that lass's body and can't come back. Since you feel so reluctant, then go outside and eat with her. If I get to eat alone, I'll be able to eat more. Lady Mother, how could you possibly finish all of the food on this table? It's still better for me to help you finish it all. Zhejun Yang picked up a pheasant leg and placed it into Princess Consort Jing's bowl on top of the rice before he continued, Before I left, my lord father repeatedly reminded me that I need to take good care of you. You need to eat more. If you get thinner, my father will peel the skin off of me. You stinky brat, you only know how to make fun of me. Be careful or else your lord father will spank you. A flush arose on Princess Consort Jing's face. She was already in her forties yet was still able to reveal bashful expressions like a young woman. Under the light of the luminous pearl, the smile on her face seemed to have a bit of elegance and splendor mixed together. It was no wonder she was able to have Imperial Prince Jing favor her alone for all these years. Lady Mother, please spare me ah. I don't dare to make fun of you as a Jun Yang took on the task of being old lazy. One and did his best to tease his mother into a better mood. With her son by her side, Princess Consort Jing was quite happy and was able to eat a few more bites of her meal compared to before. The lightly stir-fried dishes in front of her tasted exceptionally good today. One, old lazy, comma one of the exemplars from the 24 filial exemplars, behaved in a childish manner to amuse his parents and keep them happy. Chapter 400 Lacking Food The crisp sounds of birds chirping broke the silence in the mountain ravine. The first ray of warm sunlight peeked into the mouth of the cave. Zhejun Yang, who had been sleeping on the ground with the bodyguards outside of the cave, stood up and loosened his stiff and somewhat sore limbs. From time to time, he unconsciously looked towards a certain cave inside. All of the caves were currently silent without any movement. Other than the sounds of the bodyguards walking around, the rest of the cave system was completely quiet. Before long, the maids and senior servants from the mountain villa had gotten up, washed up simply, and started to cook breakfast for the bodyguards and other servants. Zhejun Yang stretched his neck a bit. How come there was no sound of movement in the A family's cave? When would that lazy lass, Yuxiakao, finally stop sleeping in? He had only arrived at this place last evening. After eating dinner with his mother and catching up, Yuxiakao had already gone inside her family's cave to start dreaming by the time he came out. The cave housed his future father and mother-in-law, so he couldn't just walk in to bug their daughter under their noses. He could only resist the temptation within his heart and stroll around the outer cave system for a long time before he went to sleep. Finally, there were some sounds of movement in the middle cave. The first person to come out was a graceful young maiden who was wearing a simple set of cotton clothing. Her hair had been combed into two hair buns. Happiness crawled onto Zhejun Yang's face and he stepped forward. However, once he got a closer look at the girl's face, he revealed a disappointed expression and said, Ah, good morning, Xiolian. Xiolian had noticed the disappointed look on the prince's face and covered her mouth to surreptitiously smile. Then she spoke to the royal prince, who was craning his neck so far that he almost entered the cave. Younger sister will probably be sleeping for another hour before she gets up. Yesterday night she told me to tell you that if you woke up early, you could go to the small creek and catch some small white fish to bring back. That way. She could make some fish soup today. This is the ceramic pot that's already been baited, so you can use it. Zhejun Yang looked a bit helpless. That lass always knows how to order me around. How can I be forced to do such crude labor? Despite his complaints, he still took the ceramic pot that was offered to him. The little lass wasn't going to get up for another hour. It was better to take a walk in the ravine a bit instead of staying here doing nothing. Getting some fresh air in the morning would be nice. He jumped into the valley and traveled to the bank of the creek. After taking off his shoes and stepping into the water, he looked at the white fish swimming in the water and idly thought, 
Why would I need to use bait to catch these fish? With my skills, how would I not be able to catch these fish easily? However, when he started to try without the bait, he immediately discovered that he had overestimated himself. The small white fish were nimble and were even more slippery than loaches. They darted back and forth between the rocks. Sometimes they would brush by his fingertips while other times they would swim around his feet as if they were teasing him. After trying for quite a bit of time, his body was covered with sweat and he didn't end up catching many. Now humbled, he could only place the ceramic pot inside the creek and wait. Suddenly, a weird phenomenon occurred. Those little white fish seemed to have been supernaturally drawn towards the ceramic pot and even lined up to go in. It was as if they were all squeezing in to do a pilgrimage to see a saint. He unconsciously frowned. Every time he was near Yuxiakau, he always felt like the little lass had some sort of secret. This secret allowed her to go beyond the natural and do things that were considered impossible in this world. He was worried that, in the future, her mysterious power would cause trouble for her. However, with him around to protect her, other than the emperor or his imperial grandfather, no one else would be able to harm the little lass before going through him first. He would be her shield and help her protect her secret and keep her safe. With him around, there was no one who could harm his little lass. After thinking it through, Zijun Yang gradually stopped frowning as his mood improved. His little lass only needed to do whatever she wanted to do. Seeing her act naturally all the time was what he liked about her. By the time he brought back the ceramic pot full of fish and entered the entrance of the cave, Yuxia Kao had already started cooking on the crude stove top. She glanced at Zijun Yang, who had scuttled by, and didn't even raise her head as she said, Prepare the small white fish right now. I'll need to use them in a moment. Me? Zijun Yang pointed incredulously at his nose and his voice had an undertone of obvious surprise. I know how to use swords, staves and how to kill enemies I just don't know how to clean fish to eat. If you don't know how, you can always learn. Quickly go. I need to use them soon. Yuxia Kao didn't even raise her eyes as if ordering around a royal prince was something that came naturally to her. The servants from the prince's residence had already gotten used to this. They continued to do their tasks and not a single one came forward to help their master get out of this predicament. Princess Consort Jing stood at the entrance of her own cave and watched with obvious interest as her youngest son held the ceramic pot in his hands with a look of bewilderment on his face. She covered her mouth to hide the smirk on her face. In the end, Madame Liu graciously took over. She rolled her eyes at her daughter and then took the ceramic pot from Royal Prince Yang's hands. She then pointed at his wet pant legs and said, Your Highness, go change into some dry clothes. I'll take over the task of cleaning and preparing these fish for you. Zijun Yang smiled at her gratefully. The smile seemed to be even more brilliant than the rays of the rising sun and it blinded Madame Liu for a second. She could only think. The royal prince is too handsome, in fact, he's even more pretty than Xiaokao by a few fractions. Is this type of person really reliable? In actuality, if Madame Liu had the choice, she absolutely would not choose a husband like royal prince Yang for her daughter. They were a farmer's family so what they were looking for was someone who was steady and reliable for their daughter. The best would be to find someone who was around the same social level as them. That way, if their daughter got bullied in the future, they, as her parents, would be able to support her and negotiate. The royal prince was exceptionally handsome and also had an illustrious background. In the future, if he had a change of heart, all they could do for their daughter was to cry and lament with her. Oh Madame Liu let out a heavy sigh and a worried frown crossed her face. Zijun Yang thought that his future mother-in-law disdained him for not being able to clean and prepare fish, so he hurriedly said, Auntie. In the future just call me Jun Yang Ah. Always addressing me as your highness is a bit too formal. If you have other things to do you can teach me how to prepare the fish. I learn things very quickly. Madame Liu shook her head and the frown didn't dissipate from her face. Your high your hands aren't the type of hands used to prepare fish, right? Quickly go change into a dry set of clothing Ah. The temperature in these caves are colder in the morning and night. So you shouldn't get chilled. When Zijun Yang saw that his future mother-in-law was concerned about him and that he didn't need to prepare the fish, he obediently followed her suggestion and went back to his own cave dwelling to change clothes. Princess Consort Jing Li fully commented, 
Oh ho, whose son is so obedient now, usually no one ever listens to my words, Sai what's the point in raising sons are, it only benefits other people in the long run, lady mother. In the past two years, her youngest son didn't have any of his violent spells anymore and it seemed like the demon in his heart had been suppressed, because of that. Princess Consort Ching was able to set down one of her big worries and be more cheerful, every day she seemed to like to pick on her youngest son, and Zhejun Yang had no choice but to go along with it. Princess Consort Ching pretended to use the handkerchief in her hands to dab at the non-existent tears in her eyes as she curled her lip, okay ah, uh, you haven't even married your wife yet you already think that I, your mother, is being too irksome, Sai life is too cruel ah, I spent 20 years raising my sons and I've gotten nothing in return ah, Zhejun Yang helplessly went around his mother and entered the cave to change his clothes, he was too busy to pay any attention to her fake laments and woes, he couldn't give her attention at this point, otherwise, she would latch on and not let go, the only strategy he could do was to ignore her and let her talk it out, breakfast was on the simpler side, they each had something quite rice congee, griddled flatbread and a bowl of fragrant fish soup, the smell of food lingered in the caves whenever they ate and took a long time to dissipate, today, the Yu family, Liu family, and Princess Consort Jing and her son all sat together in a corner outside their caves to partake in the meal. They found a few rocks that were mostly flat to act as their table. Other than Princess Consort Jing, who was sitting on a cushion, everyone else sat on the ground as they ate the food with gusto. Father, we don't have much grain left over from what we brought. If we scrimp and save, we should be able to last until tomorrow morning. Yuxia Cow drank the fish soup as she frowned with a worried look on her face. Yu Hai sighed and said, I don't know how long these Woka pirates will stay until they leave how about, tomorrow I'll go walk around the mountain a bit and see if I can hunt down a larger animal or something. Zhejun Yang scowled and said, how about I take Zheng Yun and the others to go into Dongshan village and snatch some grain back. While we are there. We can also kill a few pirates and allow me to vent my temper on them. When he found out that the pirates were attacking, he sped all the way over to Dongshan village on horseback. The rage in his heart hadn't gone away. If he wasn't worried about his lady mother's and Xia Cao's safety, he would have already charged into Dongshan village and started slaughtering the pirates by the dozens to relieve his fury. Princess Consort Jing remarked out of concern, there are quite a number of Woku pirates at least a hundred to two hundred, we don't have many people on our side, so we can't act rashly, make Xiang, how much grain do we have left over now, let's go with Yu Hai's suggestion and hunt some game down to add to our food stores to hopefully stretch it out for a few more days, when the residence's private army comes, then we can beat those pirates into a pulp, when imperial prince Jing was younger, he had traveled throughout the country with the emperor emeritus to the battlefields, so he was also considered a martial prince, thus, all of his sons had also learned martial arts since they were young and they were quite interested in it, naturally, this all influenced princess consort Jing so she would also occasionally reveal a more warlike side of her, although Zhejun Yang really wanted to slaughter the Woku pirates willingly but he couldn't bear to disobey his lady mother and cause her to be worried, he stamped down on the outrage inside his heart, after finishing breakfast, Zhejun Yang and a few other bodyguards left the cave system and went deeper in the west mountain with Yu Hai as their guide. Some of the villagers, when fleeing for their lives, had lost all of their luggage, so these two days passed like a year for them. Madam Zhang and Yu Das Han were two of those people. At first, they had brought too much stuff along with them and had almost fallen into the hands of the pirates so they had thrown their belongings away to run, other than the money that Madam Jiang hid on her body, the two of them had nothing else other than the clothes on their backs, during the crazy run, they had also lost Madam Li somewhere in the chaos, even now she had not met up with the other villagers, originally, some villagers thought that these two looked quite pitiful and would give out some food for them to eat, however, after two days had passed, None of the villagers had much food left as all of them had packed lightly. They couldn't even feed their own family members anymore so how could they give out food to feed these two? Luckily, the bodyguards from the prince's residence had told them that there were no wild beasts in the valley and that some wild vegetables and fruits could be found. As long as they worked hard, 
they should be able to fill their bellies. When the news traveled throughout the villages, it brought hope to all of them. Thus, the tranquil and peaceful environment in the ravine was quickly broken by the villagers. All of the flowers in the valley had been trampled flat by the hungry villagers who didn't know any better as they scrounged for food. The group that had gone out to hunt today was quite lucky. They had come across a family of four wild boars. The adult wild boars had thick skins and most ordinary arrows couldn't penetrate their hides. However, the bodyguards from the residence were all skilled. By surrounding the animals with their superior numbers, they very quickly took down the family of wild pigs. The two adult boars weighed around 400 to 500 catties in total. The two juvenile ones were about half grown, so they also provided about a hundred catties of meat too. 